what is up you guys it's your girl melly bell back again for another video this time it's another episode of high tops and soggy bottoms y'all just coming back to give you guys a few of the hottest topics that have been going on this week for over the last couple of days um that i have a little take on so <laughs> yes um first starting off with kind of soggy bottom news um greg leaks has passed away following his can his cancer uh fight with cancer colon cancer he's unfortunately lost that battle and passed away recently at the age of 66 and it's pretty sad you know nene just recently came out with a video trying to check a fan or whatever in some club um saying that greg will be transitioning soon until the afterlife and a couple of days after that reports show that he did actually pass away so it's actually pretty sad greg was actually pretty funny on the show uh real housewives of atlanta he wasn't like a prominent character but he still had his moments where he would check nini or whatever it was cute banter that we'd see from them you know we got to see a little bit of greg and it was actually pretty nice so it actually is very sad that he has unfortunately passed away from his colon cancer it's really sad but um, a lot of people have been sending Nini very, you know, heartfelt messages online and, you know, we continue to keep their family in our prayers. So there's that. Um, a hot topic that I actually liked, um, the three police officers and two paramedics have been indicted on manslaughter and other charges for the death of 23 year old Elijah McClain in Aurora, Colorado in 19, uh, I said in 1921. <laughs> 2019 i'm sorry to laugh because i just messed up but it's it's good news it's a step forward that they're actually you know putting these charges on people that res were responsible if you don't know um elijah mcclain was a young man um i believe he was like walking home from something uh from an event or something and you know three police officers basically jumped him and put him in a headlock um he was injected with ketamine um, the uh, paramedics uh, injected him with ketamine and Elijah was put in a headlock and a chokehold until he unfortunately passed away. Um, the three police officers um, that are being indicted is Nathan Woodyard, Randy Rodema, and former officer Jason Rosenblatt. The paramedics involved, Jeremy Cooper and Peter Shunijek pretty sure i didn't say that right but i am very happy that at least some type of step forward is being made um we're not just blindly just letting this go that this young man this young black man was killed he was murdered and now we're finally get taking some steps towards correcting that horrible horrible wrong so i'm glad for that i'm going to be looking out for um more information on the trial or stuff like how is this gonna go because like it was pretty r crucial like um i remember when the news broke about um elijah mcclain and it was just heartbreaking he was a very gentle soul and you know a lot of pe places and stuff online were playing the recording of him passing away screaming for help and screaming that he's just a regular guy he's just a little different you know i'm, I'm not sure what he was diagnosed with but um elijah was just a gentle soul and he didn't deserve to pass the way he did so i am glad that people involved are fin to hopefully get ready and pay for their mistakes because it was messed up they took a life and nobody did anything about it so i'm glad something is finally being done about it oh y'all we got a long way to go with this justice system but we're taking slow strides y'all i'm appreciating the little steps that we are taking so that's a good thing on it um another hot topic drake finally released the certified lover boy and apparently drake has hella diss lyrics <laughs> on his album um directed at several other rappers and other people um in the hip-hop scene um of course he did kanye he did swiss beats and he also um shot a little indirect kind of shot at justin la boy with his respectfully line or whatever the crap um it's pretty crazy everybody's been listening to the album i haven't listened to it yet because honestly i'm not a big drake fan anymore i used to love drake when he first came out and he was actually a certified lover boy singing about love songs and all that 
now with the whole champagne poppy era he lost me so <laughs> i really don't care anything about this album but a lot of people are catching all the sneak disses a lot of people are catching all the little little shots he got to say on his stuff so it's been going around everybody is literally just talking about certified lover boy i really cannot scroll through my social media without somebody bringing up so um certified lover boy so it's just like okay we get it i everybody's saying it's the highly anticipated uh album of the year like i said i'm not a fan i really don't care about drake so there's that apparently he has little disses in his songs which <sighs> are childish but there's that um Something else going on with the CLB album is that um, uh, somebody named Ernest Owens was tweeting about how um, R. Kelly was giving credits on the CLB album. Apparently, Drake sampled a song of R. Kelly's called Half on a Baby, and he put it on his song TSU. And apparently, you know when you sample somebody's songs you got to give the actual original cre uh, creator credits so i guess it was r kelly and justin timberlake that you know people are kind of having a little issue with like why are you putting these type of people on there like justin timberlake i guess is because you know of his situation that happened with janet jackson and how he completely just completely went unscathed in that whole nipplegate scandal and r kelly for the various obvious reasons i mean r kelly is on trial right now um for all the heinous acts he's done since the 90s and here you know there goes a very successful person drake is very successful and this album was the most anticipated album people have been waiting for this apparently since january and for it to come out and you know a lot of people are going to be streaming it buying it bumping it all day long to be able to put funds in the hands of someone like R. Kelly is, it's disgusting. It's terrible. It's definitely supporting him and all of his heinous actions. It's weird. It's gross. I mean, a lot of people are saying like Drake did not have to sample R. Kelly. Like if you were going to sample somebody, there's so many unproblematic people, um, uncontroversial people that you definitely could have gave that coin to. And you decided to put it into the hands of a man who is accused of a lot of terrible things and a lot of disgusting things are coming out in his trial, his recent trial that's going on right now, R. Kelly's trial. And it's just like, you would give this man money, you would give this man credit for anything. Uh, it's not the best look. And apparently, I didn't know this, but apparently Drake has an Aaliyah tattoo. So a lot of people are like, bro, how could you get an Aaliyah tattoo and you have all this love and respect for Aaliyah and yet you're crediting her abuser on your newest album, which is going to go crazy. People are already calling Certified Lover Boy album of the year and her abuser is getting credits on it. So it all just looks so weird. It all looks really gross. Um, a lot of people are saying the old, the old very old <sighs> Stupid, I'm sorry, in my opinion, a uh, controversy of you have to separate the person from the music. I honestly cannot understand how people can get to that conclusion. Like, you can't enjoy the music knowing it was made by this person. Like, how? How can you enjoy music made by someone who has done such heinous, disgusting acts? It's like it taints the music. I know people say how influential R. Kelly is all over the hip hop scene, blah, blah, blah. People love him. But at least for me, speaking on me, it's very difficult to, to um, separate the artist from, you know, the art. Like, to me, a lot of R. Kelly productions and stuff like that, you know, he's basically telling on himself. He's done so many confessions and a lot of his songs that it's like... <laughs> He's proudly, like, bragging on some of the nasty, horrible things he's done. And people are just eating it up like it's, like, the last meal. Like, I get it. R. Kelly used to be great. He, you know, everybody used to bump, you know, happy people, whatever. But coming out with these accusations and stuff, it taints him. It taints everything he's touched. It it does. And for people to just act like, oh, no, that's just, they're just accusations. It taints it. It taints it all. So, 
it's uh social media has been going in a frenzy over this i mean a lot of people are not paying it a big deal like oh you know what it's just credits he did make the song or whatever so he does have to be um credited on the new album but a lot of people are like you didn't even have to use him at all like you even using him was a choice and then you credited him and putting money in his pockets basically all of that was a choice that didn't need to be made and it was made a lot of people are only worried about the money and they don't try to put too much politics into music, which I think is personally a mistake. You have to put politics. There's politics in everything. But we'll see how far that goes. A lot of people aren't feeling it. Some pe A lot of people, majority of people are basically saying, y'all are tripping. It's not that serious. It's just one song, blah, blah, blah. And I really wish people would understand that it's not just one song. It's not. It's it's the principle behind all this. Drake purposely sampled a song by someone who was accused of such heinous acts, and he didn't have to. He could have used anybody, and he chose R. Kelly. So that's something I definitely have not been feeling it very much, giving weird energy. But that's y'all fave. Y'all gonna bump Certified Lover Boy regardless. So y'all do that. <laughs> Um, another hot topic has been going on is Zendaya in this Afro controversy child. So apparently Zendaya wore a 4C Afro wig um, to her 25th birthday bash. She recently had a birthday party or whatever, and she was photographed wearing this 4C wig. And we all love the good sis Zendaya, but she's a biracial woman. She is not a black woman. She is black and white. And I know a lot of people like to say, oh, you know, if you're half mixed, you're black. And, you know, so much of that we do as people, as black people. And I honestly cannot agree with that. She's not just a black woman. She's black and white. We can't just, you know, disregard that she's still half of a white woman. She's not a black woman. She is black and white. That's a whole new category. Like people love to just say, you know, still going back to that one drop rule where if you even have, if you're even part black, you're black. And I feel like it's such a danger to do that because of situations like this. You know, she's been pumped up to believe she's this black woman. So wearing this 4C wig is nothing. You know, it's her embracing her blackness or whatever. A lot of people are saying it's performative. She's using this black wig as performative, you know, blackness to have some type of political message or agenda. And it's just like, Zendaya has had black family members that are in, that, that were in the um, Black Panthers party. So we can't just, you know, disregard all facts and connections to her blackness. She is part black. She's half of black woman. But she's not full black woman, you know. An afro is not her natural hair. Um, that's not her natural hair texture. It's not who she really is. So her putting on this 4C afro wig does in a way convey, you know, performative blackness. Like that's not your natural hair texture. It's like a white woman putting on a, you know, a 4C afro. Like, why are you doing this? For what reason was this for? Why can you just wear your regular hair out and have a ball? Why did you need to put on this obviously kinky, obviously fro, Black Panther looking wig for a party? Um, so it's really weird. I, I mean, I like Zendaya. I like her acting. She's all right. But we cannot ignore the fact that she is half of a white woman. She is not a full black woman. So we have to ask ourselves, what was the reason behind things like this? Why would she wear this 4C wig? What was the reason? Like, for what? She could, she has beautiful, long, uh, curly hair. Why couldn't she just wear her hair? What was the afro for? For what? What was the reason? Like, let's talk about it. Why? But a lot of people are just taking a run with it, calling Zendaya, you know, all types of crazy names online, which I'm not going to do because, like, I don't know the reason for her wearing this wig. It's just uh, got a lot of people in their feelings, and I can understand why. I mean... It's a weird look. Some people all for it, you know, oh, Zendaya's black, Zendaya's black. Zendaya's black and white. That's a fact. You can't sit here and just only see that she's a black person. She is a person of black descent and of white Caucasian descent. Like, you know, you kind of can't have, oh, well, you can have it both ways because she is both black and white. So she gonna have, you know, some white attributes and have some black attributes. But going out of her way for a 4C wig, 
I don't know if that was the best look, sus. I really don't know. I'm not sure if that was maybe the best thing to do, but regardless, she did it, and people have a lot to say about it, so we'll see how that goes. Um, another hot topic going on is Nicki Minaj posting all of these pictures of her and her family, her hubby and papa bear, which is so cute. Um, the baby is absolutely adorable. She looks very nice, you know, with her little family unit because, you know, if you're a Nicki fan, you know that she's wanted to have son and that family life for a while now. So it's very good to see our good sis really going through and having that dream that she wanted come true. Um, but I cannot help but wonder why why is she doing all of this you know um and it started ever since the first time she posted um papa bear i believe i forgot where i read it from but i read somewhere that Nicki minaj never had plans on um showing her son like she never wanted to have her son in the public eye she wanted you know to keep her son off social media kind of like beyonce with the, the uh, twins or whatever like give it some time a while before you know anything was being shown about her baby stuff like that um but the reason that she did initially start showing pictures of uh the baby i believe she had some like new year's post or something like that where she posted a video of papa bear for the first time and people were so shocked and in awe about it um was because the um alleged victim i gotta say alleged the alleged victim of her husband kenneth petty was speaking a lot online about you know the crime he committed so you know she kind of took that time to use her power and stardom she sacrificed her child basically to distract the world from what was going on with that i mean it worked for a bit a lot of people didn't pay attention to all of the rumors and stuff that were coming out about his victim and stuff because they were so focused on the baby so now whenever she posts her baby and stuff like that i always have this little inkling in my head like okay so what is she trying to cover up now and little like literally maybe like a day after i thought about that she posted that and i was thinking like you know what is she hiding or trying to distract us from now reports are saying that an associate of Nicki minaj and her husband kenneth petty um have allegedly threatened um kenneth's victim with guns and very disturbing messages in her dm so it's like again like you're trying to distract the world with these pictures and videos of your baby and all of that whole time underneath kenneth's victim is getting victimized i mean um is getting you know threatened and all types of stuff is going on behind the scenes so it's like is she distracting us from what's really going on mm, i don't know but it kind of seems that way it kind of seems that way anytime she posts her baby and just pops back up on social media literally out of nowhere and at these random times something behind the scenes is going on with her and her husband that she's not trying to have the whole world look at that she's trying to have them just look at pictures of papa bear oh my gosh papa bear is so cute or chubby cheeks blah 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 he looks just like uh, Nicki minaj blah and not trying to see okay so kenneth's victim um kenneth petty's victim is being threatened with guns and violence like this is a whole woman who is still being traumatized over something that happened so long ago it's fucking sad but apparently that's what's going on this is all allegedly but it's being reported that you know um i believe his victim's name is jen um that she's being threatened by an associate of nikki's and kenneth so it's like i mean the distraction worked a little bit but it don't always work honey people are staying on the case people are really you know staying on top of um jen and her story regarding kenneth petty and how she's still struggling with that and you know she recently came out suing Nicki minaj and her husband for all types of stuff so there are people who are not going to be distracted by cute videos of the baby like this is something serious going on you guys are threatening a grown woman and a lot of people can see it so there's that i don't know what to make of that but it's just like anytime nikki posts anything about her baby she's not posting new music no upcoming anything she's just posting pictures and videos of her baby i always be like okay so what is she distracting us from that's literally the first thing that comes to my mind what is she distracting us from this time and there's that and literally it doesn't take long after that to just be like and there's that that's what i'm like when she's first posting about papa bear it came out that jen was um out here really speaking publicly about what happened so it's like 
now we have a pattern now we have a pattern now we know if she's posting about her baby it's usually a distraction so stay on for that <laughs> uh the last top i have here is a soggy bottom it is soggy bottom boozy still on gay patrol child he cannot sleep he cannot eat he cannot think unless it is about gay men specifically what Lil Nas X is doing y'all you know Lil Nas X done posted these maternity photos for his baby drop Montero coming up on September 17th I believe and or is it the 17th something like that it's dropping in September um he's been posting these maternity shoots holding this little fake belly he got you know and it is eating Boosie alive child he is over here tweeting at six in the morning fearing that Lil Nas X is just gonna just suck one of his dancers off in the middle of a performance on live tv one day at six in the morning Boosie is scared scared for our children all of our children that Boosie's gonna suck some dick on tv <laughs> I mean can we just take a second to realize that like the damn sun barely is up and the first thing on your mind is about another man sucking another man's penis on tv it's more than obsessed it's more than you know he's fearing this like there's something really going on with Boosie that I just really don't understand why he keeps speaking out about gay things and apparently i haven't seen the movie the new remake of Candyman yet but apparently he had something to say about the first few scenes of that too implying that there may be some gay scenes going on in Candyman 2 or something gay going on in there but boosie is not he's not resting on patrolling the gay community if they're black and they're gay apparently boosie's gonna have something to say about it Boosie's going to have a tweet, he's going to have a video, he's going to have a comment about it each and every single time. Which is concerning because he's not saying anything about these problematic rappers, these toxic men out here, these toxic black men that are doing real harm to the community, to black women and all types of stuff. No, he's not worried about that. He's worried about gay black men doing what gay black men do. That's where his mind is. Pretty much anytime a gay topic hits the scene, Boosie's on it and he's gonna have a comment because he's so scared about our children but recently went on to a radio show I'm not sure which radio show but he went on to a show a surf a clip has surfaced about him talking about how his son has a woman lady female trying to pin a baby on him <laughs> laughing about it kiki and about it whatever talking about this girl just wants money she been wanting his son and all that stuff like that's a huge joke that's nothing tripping blah ha ha that's something funny to kiki about but when it comes to these gay black men oh my gosh our children our children what are our children gonna learn from seeing Lil Nas X be gay on tv like you have way more pressing things to worry about than Lil Nas X and this is what you're worried about not your son possibly bringing a world a, a child into this world maybe unready unprepared whatever you're worrying about what Lil Nas X, a grown man, and Lil Nas X is not a child, he's a whole grown up adult, doing whatever the fuck he wants and making his bag in the process. And Boosie can't stand it. Once again, he got his own problems in his own family, dealing with his own children. Real problems that could really affect him. Having a baby, you know, could really affect his son. Right now, present tense, whatever. Not the future possibilities of what could happen to his son if he watches Lil Nas X kiss another man. It's disgusting. Like Lil, Lil Boosie, he really needs to get a hold of himself. Somebody really needs to set him down so he can understand that he's the one doing harm. You are being this gay patrol man for what? All that does is raise speculations that you yourself are gay, sir. And it's becoming even more obvious and even more believable because that's all you talk about. That's all you talk about. I haven't heard anybody talk about new Boosie music. There's not no new Boosie clothing wear. Any, I mean, has Boosie got on any magazines doing anything to progress Boosie? No, he can't even have a fucking Instagram account. But he is pressed, 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 pressed about Lil Nas X. Who's just moving along doing what the fuck he wants to do. Living carefree as fuck. But Boosie is just like obsessed. 
in a very insane fan kind of way. I won't be surprised <laughs> if Lil Nas X get a break in or something and it's Boosie. Boosie can't sleep until he knows that Lil Nas X is not over there sucking dick. Like, it's disgusting and it's weird and somebody really needs to help the good sis Boosie out because it's really going on for too long. I'm getting tired of him always having something to say about black gay men, but completely turned his eye to all of these toxic black men that are doing real harm in our community. Don't sit here and say you're worried about our children. You don't give a damn about our children. Stop with that lie. Like, even Lil Nas is calling him out like, dude, you're not worried about these children. Stop it. If you if you hate gay men, say it with your chest. That's a Lil Nas X. Just say you hate gay men with your chest. Stop hiding behind this shield that you're doing anything or you're, you're trying to protect our kids. You're not. You're doing more harm to our kids. You think that it's okay to be calling out gay men. What does that do? That's nothing but bullying and harassment. And you think that's better than a gay child living their gay life. Not hurting nobody, not, you know, causing no harm, just being gay, living their life. That's more harmful than you out here just scrutinizing over any gay thing that you see. <laughs> In the words of future, another toxic black man, pray for him. <laughs> pray for him, y'all. Because something is just not right with Boosie and he is not going to be right until he rids the world of gay blackness, I guess. Y'all help him. Y'all pray for him. But that's all I got for this episode of Hot Tops and Soggy Bottoms, y'all. Y'all kiki with me in the comments. Let me know if y'all have any other juice on any of these topics or anything to add. Or if I got anything wrong, please correct me in the comments. I do not mind. We can definitely kiki about the details. <laughs> um, if you like the content, go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. I plan to do more Hot Tops and Soggy Bottom episodes. I want to keep this kind of consistent. This is kind of just my filler content when I don't have any Bath and Body Works or unboxings to do. So get into it, honey. But yeah, that's all I got. And I hope to see you guys in the next one.